Hey guys, Adam here from Sapphire Glade Comics. Uh, back again with another video. We're doing a light novel review video now. Uh, sorry I haven't made one of these in a while, or any videos for that matter. Been a rough couple of been a rough couple of months, and it's also uh, I also am recovering from a bit of a uh, stomach bug. Um, so I'm feeling better now, so we can. Uh, do get back to our reviews. I have, I have read so many trade paperbacks, hardcovers, and light novels in the last two months. I almost don't have enough time to make any of the uh, videos that I want to make. But uh, today, this review is going to be on Sword Art Online Einkrad. This is volume two, and this is one of the light novels that has four short stories in here. Uh, each story follows along with, uh, the many characters that Kirito, this, uh, made friends with in SAO and the anime. This is what the anime is based off of, all those filler episodes from, uh, season one of SAO. Uh, they came from this book right here. So we have, uh, Silica and Kirito on the front cover. So there is the cover. There is the spine, and there is the back of the cover. You can pause the video if you want to read that yourself, but I'll read it for you. Read the novel that Night of the Phenomenon linked up and logged into the Delhi via MMORPG Sword Art Online in both the real world and virtual worlds. Kirito is stuck in a hell of one's man's making, and like everyone else, unable to escape until the game is beaten. But, while some players are crippled by fear and others throw themselves into completing the game, still others relax into everyday life in the face of their cruel predicament and live to the best of their ability, laughing, crying, but always enjoying the game. Among these are four women who make a mark upon the solo adventurer that Kirito has become. Silica, the beast tamer, Lisbeth, the blacksmith, Yui, the mysterious orphan, and the tragic Shachi. Never to be forgotten by the black swordsman. Alright, so basically what this is, it's, it's all the filler episodes from uh, Season 1 of SAO. So let's uh, open it up here. You get a nice uh, you get a nice illustrated page of Asuna right there. Uh, this was written by Reki Kawahara, and the artwork is by Abek. Here is the interior page. You can see... You can see Silica there crying over Pina's death. And you can see Kirito uh, talking to her, apologizing that she wa he wasn't early enough. Then we go into the Lisbeth arc, where they fight an ice dragon. So there's that. And here is this page, right? These two pages here. You got Yui and you got Sachi. And then this is just a synopsis of Castle Einkrad. So the very first short story in here is when Kirito meets Silica. And the name of that story is The Black Swordsman. Third fifth floor of Minecraft, February 2024. And basically what this uh, short story follows is it follows uh, Pina, it follows Silica's um, journey on how she met Kirito. And uh, it gives a detail on drag how uh, you can tame beasts in SAO. So uh, there's not a whole lot of illustrated interior pages, but here is one right here. Uh, this was a very sweet story. Uh, basically, Silica is in the Forest of Wandering, which is a dungeon. And uh, she, it, since she's one of the few girls in SAO, she has a lot, of, uh, a lot of suitors going after her. And a lot of people want her in the party because she is a beast tamer. And 
Pina has the ability to heal small amounts of HP independently. Um, so uh, she's upset that Pina died protecting her from some apes, but this describe this uh, short story with Silica describes her very very well. Uh, when I first saw the anime, I thought Silica was a little weak, but turns out she is actually a very very strong player uh, that can that could have gone to the front line but did not. So, as the story progresses, uh, Kirito uh, talks to her where she can get this uh, resurrection item for Beast, which is uh, which is uh, on Thoria in the Flower Garden. Uh, what the flower garden is, it's where this uh, Numia flyer is, which is uh, an item that you can use to resurrect beasts in SAO if you're a beast tamer. And Kirito wants to help her find that uh, so she can bring back uh, Pina from, from death. Uh, however, as the story progresses... Oh, and uh, here's another illustrated page of Silica uh, getting... Uh, picked up by one of the uh, beasties on the floor. They animated this, animated this pretty well, and her being a minor, they did a good job of uh, censoring, censoring her, so I was greatly appreciative of that. Um, so they make it to the Hill of Memory, Silica gets that flower, but on the way back, they run into Rosalia and her goons. And Rosalia is a green player, but uh, her guild, Titan's Hand, is actually a orange and red player guild, feared on most of the middle floors. Uh, they are not at the level that Laughing Coffin is, but they are. Uh, they do not worry about uh, what it takes to steal items from other unworry players. So, um. That's why Kirito was in the Forest of Wondering. He was tracking this guild uh, when he came across uh, Silica. So, uh, Kirito being Kirito, uh, challenges them all to try to fight him and try to beat him. And they, of course, fail because Kirito is, like, level 89, I think. And he also has a, a self-generation heal as well for himself. And basically, um, basically he sends this skill to the to Black Iron Palace to pay for their crimes and be in prison until the game is cleared. So I found that this had a lot more detail to the Silica episode in SAO. Uh, so a very good short story, and of course they bring Pina back from the dead. The next short story is called Warmth of a Heart. And this one covers uh, Lisbeth's story. And Lisbeth is the, uh, she is the uh, blacksmith for Kirito, Asuna, and all, the friend, and all their friends. And there's a lot of details that could add to uh, who she is, what she does in game, uh, stuff like that. So the light novel definitely expands upon that, and uh, yeah, I mean it was a great story. So let me try to find a, an illustrated page to show you. Mm. Ah, here we go. So this was perfectly animated in the anime. So this takes place after they fight the ice dragon, um, where uh, Kirito could have beaten the ice dragon no problem, but uh, Elizabeth uh, peeked out from cover, shouted something, and drew aggro. And the dragon was attacking her. So they wound up, uh, Kirito had to save her um, to uh, make sure she doesn't die. So they get shoved into this hole uh, down here, and they just have a 
they have a heart to heart, which was very well animated. Uh, this entire uh, short story was pretty much animated word for word. And, uh, of course, while they're down there in the uh, dragon's nest, they find the ingot they're looking for, which is uh, dragon's poop. Yeah. So, uh, they get the, uh, so, Silica and, I'm sorry, uh, Elizabeth and Kiratil, they hitch a ride on the dragon, because it comes back to visit, visit them. And then, uh, kind of teleport kind of swings them out of the hole and they use a teleport crystal to get back to uh, Elizabeth's uh, workshop. And Elizabeth is actually the first one who witnesses Kirito's uh, dual blades skill. That was never mentioned in the anime. All we know in the all we knew in the anime was that Elizabeth crafted the dark repulsor sword for Kirito from that dragon's poop. And they left it at that. And then, of course, uh, Asuna comes and Lisbeth, who ha has a crush on a crush on Kirito, and uh, of course, Silica has a crush on Kirito as well. Uh, Asuna comes back, and uh, Lisbeth gets crushed by seeing um, seeing the two embrace. And then it just goes through, uh, and then it goes through when the game uh, is beaten. That wasn't animated, but uh, was very good. So I found the Lisbeth story to be very, very good. Uh, the next one was the, uh, I think it was three episodes, and that's the Girl of the Morning Dew. Uh, remember, the Girl of the Morning Dew is uh, was all about Yui, and Yui is in a way Kirito and Asuna's child in the virtual world. And they kind of go over things. Uh, there's a lot more details about them going on break from the guild and their duties. Because at this point, Kirito and Asuna are married in game. And uh, they're just trying to figure out what to do. So Kirito, of course, being Kirito, tells this uh, story about um, a ghost he saw in the woods. And Asuna, she's not a fan of ghosts, um, is scared. But curious so they walk down the path and what do you know they find a little girl in a white dress and long black hair that falls into their arms on their walk and at this point uh, this girl Yui does not have any memories of what she is who she was so she goes she's kind of like in a Kamato state for uh, majority of the first chapter in this sh short story. Um, so Kirito and Asuna uh, take you back to their cabin, uh, let you get some sleep, and uh, she wakes up a day or so later, and it's like, "Are you my mommy and daddy?" And, of course, that does absolutely crush his Kirito and Asuna. And, like, of course we are. I'm not taking that from your bridge. Okay, maybe I am taking it from your bridge. Uh, so I found that to be fairly well animated. But, of course, Kirito and Asuna are still wondering. It's like, well, what if this girl isn't an NPC, but rather someone's child that uh, dove in with her parents? Because uh, the Nerve Gear could only work on kids 13 and older. So they're not sure. They're not sure. So they go and uh, they go to the town of beginnings on the first floor to figure out if you can draw any memories back from there. And then they find this uh, this church that uh, doubles as an orphanage. And it is there that Yui uh, has a spurn of memories uh, come back. Uh... And the army, of course, uh, is collecting taxes. So, and Asuna and Kirito don't take kindly to that. So here's Asuna, uh, bodying a guard in town. 
uh, to protect this uh, orphanage that's just perfectly innocent, ran by this uh, lady named Shasha. And, and Shasha is just helping these orphans who were 13-year-old kids that dove into the game, and all they were probably looking for was just a couple hours of fun, but instead they got trapped in a game of death. So that was uh, that was very well animated. They did a good job animating that. And after the fight, uh, Yui uh, has talks about how everyone's hearts are one, and that kind of uh, short circuits her circuits, and she winds up uh, falling asleep again. So. As they're working on things, uh, trying to figure out who Yui is, if she's a kid, that's this loss, etc. Uh, they uh, look to help out a member of the army guild, uh, Uriel. And uh, Uriel ha is, in is married, sort of married to Thinker in game. And... Uh, basically, they go to this dungeon on the first floor, which is extremely hard. It's about the equal of uh, upper floor, beyond floor 75. And it's the Grim Reaper. So there's a battle, and it's, there's a bunch of details in here. Um, and this is where Yui really actually remembers who she is. She is a program, programmed to help sell the hearts and minds and the mental health of the various players in the world of SAO. So was well, very well known, so Yui uh, pretty much activates her system admin privileges, goes god mode because she's a moral object, summons an ultra powerful sword which looks awesome in the anime, and just destroys this uh, this boss. And that's where we get details about the cardinal system. The cardinal system is the uh, the base of how SAO operates. So that was a great story. And then it just uh, it's just Kirito and Asuna doing um, taking care of having emotionally emotionally breaking down because Yui went beyond her her rights as a uh, as a helper in the Carlin system, just about eliminates her, but she does not get eliminated because Kirito uh, saves her as an item in game, and then she also say he also saved Yui as a uh, data bank file and his ner and his own personal nerve gear, which he then later transferred to a uh, small Raspberry Pi, so Yui would always be around. And then the last and final short story in here, short story number four, is called The Red-Nosed Reindeer. And basically what this is, it's the uh, story of the Midnight Black Cats. Those of you who haven't watched the anime, the Midnight Black Cats was Kirito's first guild. And uh, he uh, became really, really good friends with this guild because they were training hard to try to join the frontier the frontline players and Sachi uh wanted a lot of help to get better to learn uh shield and sword better but she is actually a uh a, a lancer type base class and uh what so we learned what uh Kirito was doing shortly after the red nosed reindeer event where he was us uh, accumulating all this experience point in this uh, hunting zone, and of course, Klein comes and be like, "Hey, man, you okay? I understand you're still you still feel guilty over uh, what happened to your guild." And it was uh they didn't animate that part, but it was really really good. Um, so then we go into uh, Kirito escorting Kita and his guild out of a uh, labyrinth. And they go to this. Uh, they go to this uh, thing. They're actually a group of friends in the, in their school's computer club. So there's a picture of Kita and Shachi. 
So Kirito does offer to help, but he keeps his stats hidden from um, which turns out to be his biggest mistake ever. Um, to make it short, because this video is already, already long enough, uh, Shachi has a panic attack and tries to run away. And uh, they learn about this uh, rare item, or they, they want to do some more farming in a labyrinth. And they uh, go to this mysterious room. Uh, one of the guild... <coughs> Bless me, sorry. Um, one of the guild members uh, opens up a uh, chest that triggers a trap. And it's a no teleport crystal zone too, so and then insult to injury. So ultimately what happens to the Moonlight Black Cats is they all die. And Kirito bears the full guilt for that, and it proves to be his driving force throughout the entire SAO series, but doesn't truly come to fruition until the Elizization Awakening arc. So, uh, Kirito, for the longest time, feels guilty about how he let his guild die and concealing his own stats from his uh, guildmates. And he uses this. Uh, he uses this uh, Christmas event because it's supposed to drop a resurrection item. But the thing with this resurrection item is it can only resurrect a, a dead player if you use it within ten seconds of death. So he tosses that. He tosses that over to Klein, and he uh, to finish things off. Uh, Shachi leaves him uh, a message because they had a shared inventory for a little bit, and. Yeah, it was a uh, it's a very very sad story. But uh, anyways, there's my uh, overview of and deep dive and mumbling of Sao Light Novel Volume Two. Uh, sorry that these videos aren't very exciting, but I will work on making them more exciting as time goes on. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. And you all have a fantastic rest of your week. And uh, stay healthy. And if you like this video, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I do weekly videos like this all the time. And I truly, truly enjoy doing them. So thank you guys for watching. Y'all stay, uh, stay cool. And I will catch you guys later. Bye. Until the next video.